are pretty on your eyes. There it is. First can of hot coffee of the season out of the vending machine. Good morning, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with another Friday Reads Al Fresco. It's a little cool, but I'm not cold, and I have this to keep me going here. I'm filming about an hour late, but it's still the park is still quiet because I guess it's so cold. It's about 14 degrees. Perfect weather for me. Thank God that horrific summer heat has gone. So, I have lots to say, and it's been kind of a weird reading week. It's been kind of a weird reading month. October didn't go as well as last year, and that sometimes happens. I am giving serious thought to integrating readathons or the themes of readingthons into my reading year in 2020 uh, in a different way that is still doing deep reading in Women in Translation and Victober and stuff, but I think I'm going to spread it out throughout the year and just read a token book or two during the readathons because it hasn't gone as well this year for me, concentrating my reading. So I, I'm thinking about it. I haven't decided. I love what the readathons have done for me in terms of expanding my horizons as a reader over the past couple of years, but I think I'm kind of done with them in the conventional sense. Uh, but just, I want to read Women in Translation and Victorian literature and everything else that I like, Welsh literature, queer literature, translated literature in general throughout the year and just, you know, do one or two during the readathons just so that I can help promote them because they work for a lot of people. They worked for me for a long time, but I'm just kind of thinking this year, maybe that's it. And uh, I'll probably read a Victorian novel and a Women in Translation novel and whatever else. African-American novel uh, each and every month next year quite it's highly likely that something like that might happen so stay tuned for that I have one bail to tell you about I bailed on the gateless barrier by Lucas I did the research on the how to pronounce the pseudonymous surname and I for, have forgotten what what the consensus was M Malay or Malay I think it was Malay so Lucas Malay because it was a ghost story and I freaking hate ghost stories so much and, and I tried. The writing was really good. Pseudonym for Mary St. Leger Kingsley. And once I got, I thought, just try a ghost story, Sean. Just try it. Maybe it'll be okay. It wasn't okay. I just hate them so much. They're so stupid. And as soon as that part came in, which was about a third of the way or something uh, through, I just bail. So... She has written other longer novels that I want to try because I really enjoyed the writing, but your ghost stories suck. Happy Halloween. It's just like any kind of genre. Once, the, once I see the, the scaffolding of the genre plot, I just want to puke. It doesn't matter which genre. Blech. How's that for a controversial start to my Friday read? So I had a bail and I think I only finished one this week. I thought about pushing myself to finish more, and I thought, that's kind of stupid. I don't want to push myself. Just one, I finished Despised and Rejected by Rose Alatini, published in 1918 under the pseudonym A.T. Fitzroy. In the end, it wasn't a very good novel. Um, I gave it three stars. As I talked about last week or the week before, I think just last week, the coming out narrative was both historic and maybe not the first one. There's an afterword that talks, compares it to other gay male literature of its time. And notice that I said gay male literature. The, the gay man's coming out story and the beginning of the lesbian's coming out story in this novel were really powerfully told and packed an emotional wallop for me a, hundred, a century later. And then the novel, and this is my opinion only, my buddy reader Leah, she agreed with me, but it didn't wasn't as big of a problem for her, her as it was for me, because for me it was almost fatal, the flaw, that then ab about halfway or even less than halfway, the novel, I would use the word, devolved into a really talky, boring no story about draft dodging, about resisting conscrip conscription in the UK, during World War One, not that that topic bores me, not at all, but the way it was done, instead of the story that had been about what was emerging out of the characters, 
the gay man and the lesbian. Then it just became this cerebral discussion between a whole bunch of new characters and those old characters about what links they would go to to avoid fighting in World War I. And again, that topic could be so richly explored, but it was not richly explored. It was all here. Cerebral dialogue. Boring as all. Get out. Jesus. Ruined the novel. I'm less certain about this criticism because I think that the lesbian character was modeled on Rose Alatini's life itself, but it's like the author couldn't decide. Her acknowledging her lesbianism was not as... It didn't emerge in the same way that the gay man's coming out to himself emerged so viscerally. And then she, they had kind of played, the, the gay man and the lesbian had kind of played at perhaps getting engaged or getting married and then she never could let go of that and she was jealous of him when he got a boyfriend and it's like is she a lesbian or I mean bisexuality is a thing but it just it seemed her character was all over the place and that character Antoinette started out with so much poise and kind of a really centered incredibly intelligent personality and then she just became hysterical and I didn't understand why that happened. But if it's modeled on Alatini's own life, she can write whatever story she wants. But I didn't enjoy the way her character, what happened with her character. And I don't think any of that's a spoiler, but I also don't recommend this book very highly, sadly. And I am sorry, but I can't think of, what was a book that Persephone published that I loved? I can't think of one. There must be a, have been at least one, but boy, I, I think I'm just about done with Persephone. I'm being a little negative Nelly this morning. Oh my goodness. Nice end papers though. <laughs> so that's all I finished. I have started one that was kind of, what's the word? Spontaneous. There's always a part of me that likes to resist when my reading is too overly planned. And so I added another Gone with the Book book. The Third Miss Simons by F. M. Mayer that is on Scribd. I can't remember how I found out about it, so I'm assuming just somebody posted something about it on Twitter. But if you were the one that mentioned it on, on your channel or something, please leave a comment because I can't remember as usual. I added it to my TBR and then I saw that it was on Scribd. So I started reading it. It's only like 150 pages or less. Uh, Flora MacDonald Mayer, 1872 to 1932. So this one was published in 1913. So perfect, gone with the book book, but uh, it's not very good. I think I'll finish it, but it's about a really unhappy girl who grows up to be an even unhappier woman, and she's kind of despised and rejected by her family. But she's, her personality is so unpleasant, and the novel is dwelling so much on the dysfunction and the negative emotions without any other kind of character building that I'm just kind of bored by it, actually. But I think I'll finish it. It has a, there's a liveliness to the prose, but what she's choosing to foreground and not coloring in any background about these characters, I don't really care. Like I kind of say, I would, I would kind of despise and reject her too. Show me something about her that I can like. I, you know, it, again, this whole thing, do you need to like characters or not? I just think it's not a full picture of these characters. It's just, she hates him and he's angry about this and this and angry and negative and negative, but do they have any hobbies? <laughs> Anything else going on in these people's lives? Yeah, so not, not really enjoying it that much. So you can see it's been a little bit of a negative, a little bit of a strange reading week. It's okay. I'm st other stuff that is still in progress. I'm going to be carrying some novels. Uh, I didn't finish everything up, and that's just fine. And those, a lot of those are going much better, if not extremely well. So I haven't only been reading crap. <laughs> so all that's left for me to tell you about is what I'm going to start. Today's November 1st, and I did a TBR video, which went up a few days ago. I won't go into the same level of detail. I'm just going to hold a bunch of books and mention a couple, some books because I'm going to be starting a whole pile of possibilities. Hopefully none of them will be bales, but let's take predictions down below. Of the books I tell you about that I'm going to start this week only, how many do you think I will end up bailing on? There's no prize, just my respect and 
admiration. <laughs> Today I will be starting the buddy read of this uh, biography of the Pankhurst family. The Pankhurst, the history of one radical family by Martin Pugh. It is Pugh uh, with Britta Bowler. And I'm really excited. We're going to do this over five weeks because it's a chunky one. And I am really looking forward to that. Stay tuned for some outtakes at the end of the video. And there's the bookmark they sent with it. Isn't that fabulous? Can't remember if it's today or tomorrow, but I'll also be starting this biography of Princess Mary Adelaide, the Queen's great-grandmother, known affectionately as Fat Mary. <laughs> I am so excited about this. Can I show you just one picture? There she is at the time of her marriage. But she got up to be about twice that size. And she had a really uh, fascinating life and boisterous effusive personality. I'm gonna really enjoy this. I'd be shocked if I didn't. Mark Nash, do you want to jump in on the buddy read? I think Monday is when Ange of Beyond the Pages and I start our two-month-long buddy read of Balzac's Cousin Bet. We're gonna do it at a very leisurely pace, which is how I like to do my read my tomes, so that's gonna be fantastic. Britta doesn't think I'm gonna like it, but I think I am. So let's see. Any opinions out there besides Britta's? Am I going to like it or not? This weekend I will start my buddy read with Greg of Supposedly Fun, our first buddy read, and the book two prize winner, A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne. And we all know that the book two prize is now the only book prize worthy of your respect from here on in, right? We can all agree on that. And let's see what the prize winner is all about. I am doing my second Danilo Quiche novel, which I will like the first one, Buddy Read with Lukash of Totally Pretentious, and it is called Psalm 44. I think it's one of his early ones, and it's very short. We're going to read it over three days, starting, starting tomorrow. And sometime this weekend or next week, I will start the Buddy Read of the Anita Desai short story collection, Diamond Dust. I just bought the ebook for five bucks on Apple Books, and that's a Buddy Read with Joe Smith. So that's, I think that's it, isn't it? I, I think I'm not going to be able to stop myself if I have enough time to just read at least a few pages. This biography of Barbara Pym by Anne Alistair. It's a short one. I think I can fit it in because, you know, Barbara. My Friday Reads is a little bit short again, so let's see. I want to shout out German Lit Month, which is not a BookTube-sponsored readathon, but people are talking about it on BookTube, and especially Mel of Mel's Bookland Adventures, so I'm going to link her video. I mentioned it also in my review of the Anna Sager's novel yesterday. Especially earlier 20th century German novels, just fantastic. I'm a little hyper this morning. That sh and uh, now the sun's moving. I'm almost finished, so sorry about the glare, people. I'm not going to move anything at this late, this late in the game. Natalie of My Reading Days has a video up, a 40-minute video. The longer Natalie's videos are, the better I like them. About her Gone with the Book readathon, Sarah of Hardcover Hearts has just posted an hour ago a video called Victober Victory Video, Celebrations, Successes, and Ideas. Sharon Goforth has a Nonfiction November Pile of Possibilities video. And a, a new favorite of mine, and I haven't ever learned her name, but her channel is enigmatically titled Soggy Expat Book Nerd. She lives in Wales. I believe she's American with a Welsh husband. And they're raising their child speaking in both languages. Just fantastic. She has a spooky Halloween novellas chat in her local Victorian cemetery in Wales. One more. Cousin of Always Doing, I watched this last night, has her most anticipated reads for November. She does this every month, and our tastes overlap to a certain extent and don't overlap in other ways, and her most anticipated reads video is always well done and interesting. So those are my recommendations, or the ones that I will be watching later today. So that's what I got. What do you got? And my, look at that, the book depository sent me there's the cover, and there's the... There's the cover, and there's the bookmark they sent. Fuck. Okay. There's the cover of the book. Nice 
The mauve, is it mauve? I don't know my colors. It's purple. And there's the... Ah, I've done this a hundred times. There will definitely be outtakes of this one. And there's the bookmark they sent with it. Isn't that fabulous? <laughs> Thank you.